the house. Oh, wow. I think we're in the house. We're in the house? We're in the building? I think we're in the building. Oh, Hallelujah. we just apologize. We were a bit late. Oh, my gosh. If Forgive I, us. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, first, let's start off by saying I am Mr. Devil Slayer. And I am Mrs. Devil Slayer. And together we make up the love chapters, and it's all about agape, right? Yeah, yeah. Agape, Delio, Sorde, everyone. That's right. That's right. Wow, wow, wow. All I got to say is wow. If, 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 if I can tell you now, if I can just explain to you how many obstacles came in the way Mm. of us getting this show together. Wow. Go ahead. Let's just, let's just say that God is good. Amen. Amen. Okay. He's giving me the pointer finger. So I'm trying to figure out what that means. y'all. I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm a gem. I'm a gem. You know, man of God. And I, w- I would like the ladies to go first. So, so, welcome back to another episode of the Love, L O V E chapters, where we talk about all things love, relational love, yes. loving, you, loving the one you're with, yeah. loving your parents, loving, yes. you know, your children. I mean, yes. we, this is a foundation that we need as believers, non believers. Mm-hmm. Love is our universal language. Would you agree? Definitely. Yeah. And and the greatest one of all is who? God. Yes. Jesus. The only way we can truly love the way we need to, to love our, uh, our significant others is through Jesus Christ. And that's why we do what we do. And that's why we share, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we talk about him, and, and, and we lift you all up, and we just uh, we go through the different teachings, um, so you all can have the same foundation as, as, as... go ahead. Yeah, no, I just you wanted want to, to say, well, no, 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 <laughs> uh, everything you just said was good, I just wanted to uh, uh, talk about uh, the love of Jerry Royce and the Positive <laughs> Power 21 Network radio show, oh my gosh, they got these guys, let me tell you something. Yeah. These guys, mm-hmm. I mean, Jerry and the family, all I can say is thank you for the love that you guys have shown us. You guys have definitely brought our ministry to another level for 2021. Yes. Hallelujah. That's everybody right there. That's right. That's right. And happy New Year to everybody. Thank you. Happy New yeah. Year. So, yeah. we had an awesome time uh, in the Lord that was very profound and uh I wanted to just bring that back around because there were so many good nuggets. We had a lot of powerful, powerful women on our call the other night, right? Yeah. And oh, I mean, God just showed up and you know, showed up. Yes. 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 Whoa. Shout out. Can we get some shout out? Can, can yeah. Can shout out to Ashana. Um, Shana. Uh, Shana. 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 Lady with the slang. Shana. Always Shana. 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 <laughs> Uh, 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 sister, sister Victoria. Yes. Wow. Uh, uh, sister Tashana. Sister Tashana. Yes. Uh, we're gonna give out to Mrs. King. Sister King. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And, and and who else? Who else? Who else came to the Oh yeah, Deborah. Yes, yes. We don't have to call Mrs. Cognito. Mrs. Cognito. Don't get into that. I'll be incognito, but you say you say the name. Deborah King. Tanya. Tanya, oh my gosh, this yes, is Tanya. This is Tanya, prophetess Tanya, coming with the prophetic word, coming through and just changing the whole flow. Yeah, whole yeah, yeah. Energy. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 brother, and brother David Porter. Brother yes. David Porter, we got to give some, 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 some shout outs to, and uh, to everybody, to everybody who. Um, and Nikia Boone. Oh, of course, course. We had family, an extended family yes. member on the yes. line. Yes, yes, just, yes, yes. Ooh, yes, I'm yes. telling you, when you hear this lady minister his song. Yeah. And as well, I just want to give a shout out to uh, brother, um, brother Lenny, big brother Lenny and Sister yes, April for, yes. for dropping those nuggets on us up for the last couple of weeks. That series was wonderful and they yes. proved what a agape is in marriage. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. So Amen, speaking though. about relationships, we want to bring back to our relationship. We want to talk about, or I wanted to talk about marriage now. We wanted to reel it back in and really identify the different layers of getting to know your spouse mm-hmm. in marriage, because we spoke about last night about the different layers of the Lord Jesus that, you know, 
God can give simple instructions, right? He, he's simple in some aspects, but he's still complex. His character, his nature, there's different levels to him. Like there's different levels to us being humans in a relationship. And every day you're learning something new mm -hmm. about the Lord Jesus. Although when he speaks at times, it could be very simple. I know that's one of the things that we spoke about, about that's simplicity. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Of the Lord Jesus. And you brought something up that was so profound. You, you directly correlated how you have to continue growing, just like growing your relationship with the Lord. That is the love of God, growing in the love of God, growing that relationship and also growing in your relationship with me mm. as your wife. Yeah. And that it's not always simple, mm -hmm. but with God, sometimes when we speak to each other, it's not always simple. But with right. God, our relationship with him, when yeah. he tells us things, he yep. speaks to us, it's very simple. Yeah. And, yeah. and how we believe, and yeah. it, it's simple, but yeah. Yeah. when we transfer that into yeah. humanistic terms, as mm -hmm. far as me relating with you, mm -hmm. us relating with our children, mm -hmm. it's not so simple. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we wanted to just address the mm -hmm. nitty and gritty of communication and, and, and relationships within our marriage specifically, and I wanted to ask you specifically, mm -hmm. you had made a comment last night and how mm -hmm. it wasn't so simple, mm -hmm. men understanding women, women vice versa, understanding men. So can you just expound more about what you spoke of last night regarding how you felt it wasn't so simple uh, yeah. in, yeah. your, in your I guess yeah. you say in your quest to getting yeah. to know me on a more personal sure. level. Sure. You you know what you know what it is. Uh, let me just start out, start out by saying, um, beloved, um, and to the fans out there, and 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 to the beloveds out there. Um, I looked up what the what agape is, and agape love is selfless. It's sacrificial. Mm -hmm. It's unconditional love. It is the highest of the four types of love in the Bible. And so agape, that's Greek, just for, for anybody who wants to know. So it's a Greek word, okay? And what happens is, is that the, the things that stuck out to me the most when, was when it said selfless and unconditional. You see, I believe that, I believe that only um, Holy Spirit can be unconditional. I, I believe that Holy Spirit can, it is, is that that essence of God who is forever, who is everlasting? So, of course, he's. It, there's no bounds. There's no limits because he is spirit. Okay, us as human beings, we are flesh. So automatically, from the day that we are born, there are bounds that are put on us. There are limits that are put on us because. Where flesh. Now, now understand what that means. God is just telling me this all right now. Just think about it now. If you don't think that you're that you have limits, then try walking off a building. Okay, you're gonna see very quick <laughs> that you have limits. Try walking out in the street when the light changes while the cars are coming down and see if you have limits. Okay, there's there's certain limitations that we have in the physical, when as soon as we understand that there's certain limitations in the physical, we automatically start to harness that, those limitations just by what we see around us. Hey, look, listen, when you're young and everybody has had this, 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 this event, when you with this phenomenon, when you go to the fire and you touch it and it burns you, you realize that, okay, that there's a limit that you can go to. After that limit, that stays in your head. So that's a learned thing. That's something learned. Okay? So uh, 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 we, we've all gotten our finger jammed in the door. You know, like, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're young. When you're young, you know, you got your hand in the door, your sister, your brother comes by and they slam the door. Bam! Right in your finger. You go, oh, my goodness. Right? And it hurts like the dickens. So you realize that you have limits on how far you can go, and then you learn from those limits. And so, so there, hence, therefore, the next time you go near that door, you're making sure that your hands are away. There are limits. There are limits, okay? So automatically, the, 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 the boundless 
person that you might think that you are when you're a child, automatically you start to realize that there are some type of boundaries. You go in mom's pocketbook without her asking you, or without her asking you to go in the pocketbook and see what happens to you. Okay, so you, you start to learn that there are limits. So with that being said, right? There are the limits that's learned, that's self-learned, and there are the limits that people put on you. There are people that, there, there's limits that people start to teach you. Okay, when I was growing up in the hood, we were taught that whatever gift you have, whatever talent you have, don't let it known to everybody. Like, let's say that you're really good at typing, right? But you get a job where you um, are, you're, you're uh, a customer service representative. Okay, what happens is, is that as a customer service representative, they'll tell you, you know what, you can't type. You don't, 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 don't show your typing speed. Don't show how fast you type because then they're going to want you to do more work. Okay, because you show them that you can type. So they said, just be the customer service rep and let somebody else do the work on the register. Hence, they're putting limits on you. They're telling you not to do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. So what am I saying? What am I saying is, is that it's the same thing in relationships. In relationships, you uh, uh, like when I was growing up, I was taught that you know, yo, you know, the the, the only way that you're gonna rule in your household, you gotta rule over women. You gotta rule over them. That means you can't let them talk about finances with you. You don't let them do no business together. You hold on to the credit cards. You hold on to the money. They're just there. They clean. They cook. They make the babies. That's how I was brought up. Okay, so with all these limitations or all these things that that I was taught coming into marriage or, or just coming into a relationship with you, just coming into a relationship with Christ, I learned that there's a whole big difference. I learned that there's a whole big difference in the way that I was taught as opposed to what God was now teaching me. Um, and that's how I give shouts out to Brother Lenny and there's some other brothers in the church that have been married like forever who I was able to observe and, and, and watch and learn from and, and pick their brains on how marriage is really supposed to be. And plus from us going to marriage counseling, when, when it finally came time for us to be married, I realized that I have to look at things from a whole different perspective. I have to look at things now in my limited position from a Holy Spirit, spirit-filled, limitless perspective that means now I have to think about you, I have to think about your perspectives, and I have to take the limits off of what I was taught. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's um, amen, amen. I mean, my husband, he he knows how to lay that foundation, boy. You gotta catch it. You gotta catch it. <laughs> so, um, amen, amen. Um, I would like for us to just pray in because I know we were, you know, um, came in kind of late. So let's, because I want to uh, get to a scripture after this. But let's okay. say a quick prayer yes, for the people and um, ourselves as well, Father. We just thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we travailed and pressed past the obstacles, Lord, to just make it on the call tonight. Yes, Lord. Seeing and hear a word from yes, you, Lord, Lord. not yes, from Lord. us, yes, but from Lord. you. So we thank yes, you right Lord. now that ears are tuned, hearts are open, and yes, uh, we're available, Father. And we just yes, thank Lord. you that it's by your grace and grace alone, Lord, that we're able to even stand in such a capacity, Father, and minister mm-hmm. your word. So we just praise you on tonight. We thank you, Lord, that it's all of you and none of us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 So let's turn to, uh, we're going to go, since we're talking about marriage and the Christian household and the different layers uh, in marriage and learning about your spouse, um, let's go to Ephesians 5, because the best way to really talk about this and breaking down those layers, you know, like my husband was saying, is going to what scripture says, what God says ultimately, but the scriptures, Ephesians 5. And this is one of our foundational scriptures um, that we that we actually Used in premarital counseling, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank God for premarital counseling. Never let it be said, don't go to premarital counseling. Yes, I'm telling you, whatever, I'm telling you, premarital counseling has really uh, 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 kept our marriage going, really. So it's because, you know, I really learned how to look at my wife uh, a different uh, a different perspective other than my own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going through the different layers, right, of getting to know one another, you get married, and you're trying to settle in and find out, okay, this is not as simple as my relationship with the Lord Jesus. You know, I go to God, he's like, okay, daughter, 
son, I forgive you, go about your business. You know, it's easy to love the Lord, right? That's mm-hmm. simple. It's yeah. easy to love God. Yeah. However, us now loving each other now, that's where the challenge, that's where the layers are now. Yeah. There's layers yeah. to it. But first we get our agape, we get mm-hmm. our strength, we get our love from the Lord so we can now pour it out yeah. under those around us. And if you are married, your second yeah. ministry after the Lord Jesus mm-hmm. is your spouse. Mm-hmm. So let's go to Ephesians here because this lays this lays the foundation for the structure of Christian homes. The Godhead, the husband, the wife, the child, the ministry. Those are layers in itself right there. So it says in 21. Uh, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. 22. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own bodies, but they feed and care for their bodies. Mm. Just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the the wife must respect her husband. Let me say that again. And the wife must respect her husband. Woo, yeah, you, 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 you. Okay. okay, so layers. We're talking about layers. Woo, yeah. There's a lot of layers to this scripture, but yeah. we are going to do our best to try to break it down um, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so, there's a lot here. We're going we're yeah. to have to go. I know it's going to have to. This is a series. <laughs> yeah, it's a series. Yeah. This is a series. <laughs> no, I already see it coming. Mm-hmm. So let's go back because before I was a wife, before you were. I was official. Excuse me. I believe you're a wife before you become a wife, but that's another mm. story. Mm-hmm. Come but on before I officially said I do to you, I believe I was in preparation. Mm. And before you said I do, or yeah. you were officially a husband, you mm-hmm. were in preparation. Yeah. But before we said I do to one another, there was a the process. There were these layers that had to be unveiled, yeah. and especially for me. Yeah. You know, I had a lot yeah. of... Yeah. Um, you know, I had a lot of... Uh, uh, how do you call it? Walls up. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I, what stuck out to me here, the scripture was talking about the washing mm-hmm. of the word. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. you were heavily involved in ministry. And mm-hmm. I had to be, even though we weren't like officially married, yeah. I believe that God was using you yes. to wash me with the word. Yes. Because I had come out of some things. You yeah. know, I had come out of dysfunction. I've come out, I've had, I, I've uh, experienced, um, a lot of hurt and pain, and yeah. and um, I was broken. You yeah. know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I was a broken woman when yeah. I when I met you, mm-hmm. and um, as a result, thank God you had you've already been in leadership and you yeah. had experience yeah. dealing with so many yeah. women and men and children mm-hmm. and all walks of life. Yeah, uh, God used you to wash me with the word mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before we even said I do. So that process wow. started prior. Wow. And those, those were some layers because yeah. it took some time to really, for me, I feel like, for that cleansing. Because it says yeah. to make her holy. I mean, mm. cleansing her by mm. the washing with water through mm. the word. Mm. And to present her to himself as a radiant church. Mm. So, wow. would you, I mean, you can go ahead and chime in. That's just wow. the revelation that the Holy Spirit was giving you regarding wow. those layers. Wow. You know. Wow, it's so interesting, and, I, and I'll keep this short and sweet because I am very long-winded, but just to get to the nook and cranny of it, as you said, washing, you know, um, the blood washed everything away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what, and what, what Paul did in this scripture is, is that he made an analogy 
as of the washing of the washing away of the sins and and the iniquities and the infirmities that we um that that, that we had in us and upon us that when we said yes to Christ uh uh, uh, uh Christ washed away those sins. Mm-hmm. So now Paul is charging us. He's charging us. He's making an analogy, but he's but he's, he's comparing the analogy as to the relationship between man and wife, a husband and wife, to that of Christ washing away our sins. So now what he's doing is he's saying that there's a psychological factor where that man has to be the same way with with, with, with the wife and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So so. So Paul knew that we were going to come in with some baggage. God knew that we was coming in, co- coming in with some baggage. And now, um, and that's why the man is the ho- head of the household. It's up to the man to, to help to assist, to, 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 cheat, to teach the, um, the wife um, that she's already delivered. Yeah. She's already delivered from, 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 the, from, from the cares and fears and tears of the world. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's it's, it's up to the man, just like it was up to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, and and that's where agape love comes in because that was a challenge, and that 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 <laughs> that, that was a challenge because I've 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 I've, I've, I've never met uh, the, the the powerful force of Kia, <laughs> the likes of the powerful force of Kia, and I've had I some was tightly I, late, y'all. Whoa, oh, whoa. But but now let me tell you why it was it was a different type of. Uh, relationship from the other individuals that I was ministering to, men and women in relationships, in marriages as well, is because I loved you on a different level. There was a filial love. Yeah. It wasn't anything romantic per se. It was a filial love. And in order for me to receive you, to even consider even marrying you, yeah. I had to break through those layers as well. Yeah. To even yeah. receive you and say, okay, God, yeah. this is somebody you're trying to present to me. Yes. I had yes. to break through those layers, those barriers yes. Yes. of hurt, of uh, mm-hmm. disappointment, of yeah. uh, dysfunctional, mm-hmm. destructive patterns, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You know, so God can show me, okay, I'm presenting someone new to you right now, brother. Yeah. Yeah. And it might not even look mm. the way that you thought, mm. you know, and um, mm. I just found myself just naturally gravitating to him because he came with the word. He came mm. with the, he, he came with the anointing and mm-hmm. it was almost like, um, it was like mm. a woman at the well, like just taking yeah. a sip of that water, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and things just began to, I, <laughs> the trust, there was yes. a trust that yes. was built through yes. those layers, yes. right? Yes. To yes. where yes. I could move from wow. Filio mm. Into an arrow mm. type of romance, but mm. you couldn't get to arrows mm. until I could break down those layers yeah. that was going on in yeah. the brotherly, sisterly, you know, yeah. brother Christ and yeah. you know, before that. It was, yeah. it was like more like, hi, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, um, I was very, even, this is just to know like the upbringing of who you're going to even get involved with. It's yeah. so important to know like their, yeah. their, how they were raised. You know, for me, yeah. I wasn't a person that was so keen on being touched by the opposite sex, but that was only because I was inappropriately touched. And mm. so those things trigger me. And I wasn't, you know, some, some, some men in the church were a little bit loose with their hands and I was just not here for it, you know? And, um, you know, Dwayne, the pastor that he is, just very open and loving and embracing of everybody. I had to come to an understanding. Again, that's a layer that I had to come down. Understanding the person that I was with yeah. You know, understanding his lifestyle and the ministry um, yeah. endeavors that he was doing or have you doing. Mm-hmm. That's just another layer. Okay, yes. This is a different life. It's a different, yes. it's a different yes. person. This is yes. a different man. Yes. You know, yes. so those are some, again, those are some layers. And Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And and so remember, remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is pre pre marital this counseling. Is this is before mm-hmm. the pre marital counseling mm-hmm. came along. So when I tell you, when I tell you about my past, and I told you, you know, it was just about, you know, women in the kitchen making babies and so forth and so on. Not so much to that degree or level, because I always, I've always believed that a woman should be working too. But I also, I also, mm-hmm. you know, still had, still had that old stuff with me too, you know. So it had to be agape that I, you know, thank mm-hmm. God I was immersed in it in my church, you know, and being a leader and so forth and so on, because. Here it is, a, 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 woman's, a, a woman is coming to the picture, a woman in my dreams. Okay, let, let me tell you something. When I, when, when, when I described to God what I wanted, 
he gave me specifically what I wanted. Okay. Um, uh, so, but there was a package deal here. <laughs> you know There's a package deal, which means, which means that, which means that she's a whole different person that doesn't think like me, that doesn't talk like me, and doesn't act like me. <laughs> God made her individually. That means she's coming with her own stuff. Okay, and I'm not, not, just, not t- just talking about all bad. I'm, I'm talking about, it's not all bad at all. It's just, a, it's just a simple fact that there had to be a stretching within me. Hmm. There had to be a stretching within me to understand that it's just not about me. Okay, and, and I've got to kind of say that maybe, what, three months into our marriage, we, we, um, and three months into our uh, relationship with each other, maybe less, we were, we were talking about marriage, like, hey, listen, okay? So, so, so ladies and gentlemen, what, what am I saying here? Is that you know, you know that the one that you're being stretched by God, you know, you know when you're being stretched. You and, and so and so now look listen we are talking about care we're not even talking about my baggage we're not even talking about my baggage so so as Kia said as the pastor that I am you know we I you know I come in with my arms open my arms is open hey come on I'm I'm inviting you in come on with it it's a revolving door here so I allow Kia to come in and I instinctively and automatically went into ministry mode. So when she came in to my life, I went into ministry mode because I could see some things going on there. And in order to fix her, check this out now, in order to fix what was going on in her, I had to fix me. Did that. I had to I had to fix me. I had to fix what was ever going on with me to understand that wow. There's something going on here with her, but but in order for me to help her, I gotta help myself. I gotta fix me. That's that's that that's agape because agape is selfless. It's when you don't look at yourself, you look at the other person, but you also realize you gotta get this stuff together. So once she came to my life, I was like, okay, if any anything that that had holes in it, you know, I gotta start fixing up in my mind. I got I gotta get I gotta I gotta I gotta lay the I gotta make sure the foundation is Jesus. So when I'm saying being stretched, right, I'm talking about going against, going against my educational experience, my business experience, my partnership experience, my relationship experience, my, even my spiritual experience. All that had to change. And how did it change? I sought God first in dealing with the power the powerful force that is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And, you know, I was just thinking of this when you talk about being stretched. You know, sometimes ladies, sometimes, you know, loving the one God puts into your path sometimes challenges your ideals as well because I never imagined that I would be someone, I would be with someone who had children. Mm. That was something that was like, I was like, no, I'm not going to be with anybody with child Jesus, <laughs> you know? And, and sometimes when you do love someone, those things just, you naturally make adjustments and you make changes for the person that you love because you, they come with, you, you love them and everything that comes along with them, yeah. meaning you love them and you love their child. Yeah. And so you can't separate That's another the two. Factor. But I had, Stretch my whole perspective as well. And yeah. I thought about that. Yeah. Because I wasn't necessarily keen on that before. You know, I had all these ideas of what I thought I wanted or what I thought, you know, and sometimes God knows how or what to do to grow you, what situations put you in to mature you. You know, we don't always know yes, what's best for us. We might it. have a list. That's and then now my crush that list is like, listen, this is okay. Maybe, maybe that, maybe this. But how about I got something completely different for you for yeah. the destiny that I have yeah. you on that's yeah. going to mature you yeah. and it's going to propel you to where mm-hmm. I'm calling you to be. Mm-hmm. And it's a great plan, you mm-hmm. know? The plans I have for you are plans of prosperity, make you a whole, make, uh, make a future for you, a whole, yeah. I mean, to me, I think it was great because I was like, okay, well, let's let the old life. This is a whole new life. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jerry Royce, Positive Power 21 radio show, radio network, and, uh, I'm Mr. Devil Slayer. And I'm Mrs. Devil Slayer.
And we make up the love chapters, and we're yes. talking about agape now, the layers of love. Yes. My dear, would you like to continue? Yes, agape, the unconditional love, and how our yes. love has grown from filio to era. So agape, yes. because now we've torn down those layers now, and yes. we're loving each other for the differences, the different upbringings yes. that we've yes. had, yes. you know? I yes. mean, two different generations. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, a lot of conversations, a lot of yeah. talking. Yeah, uh, Pastor Red, and, Pastor Red, and his wife. They came and gave us some nuggets too. You know what I mean? So yeah. shouts out to them as well. They've been married forever too. So a shout out to Pastor Red. Mm -hmm. He he has a, a positive um, radio show on a, on on this network. So thank thank God for y'all too. Y'all y'all drop some nuggets on us and teach us too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's never you know it, it's never. Uh, we're, we're always going to be students. It's a never-ending process. That's right. We just go through different seasons. Yeah. You know, our season yeah. now, we're 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 minister. We're what? We're married and in ministry now. Yeah. Yeah. And we're business partners. So yeah. that brings a different dynamic. It's a different yeah. season. It's a different yeah. relationship now. Mm -hmm. Now it's balancing your mm -hmm. marriage. We're mm -hmm. balancing your hats as ministers, mm -hmm. respecting each other's lanes. Yes. Yeah roles and what yeah. he or she has to contribute. So it brings us no another session, a whole other layer, y'all. You know what's so interesting Talk about that? You know what's so interesting about that? Because I'm looking at the word submit. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the there. word respect, we didn't right? Get there yet. And, and what, what did I say at the beginning of this? At the beginning of this, I said that, you know, God is spirit, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and so he has no limits, right? And then we're, we're, we're physical, so we have limits, right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, we have to find a way to get into a relationship with God to understand that there's no limits, but then when you come into marriage, all of a sudden you got to submit. <laughs> and so it's like, but the thing that you're submitting to the, 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 the Christ in the person, you're, mm. you're submitting no. to the Christ in the person. And and, 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 and and the reason why you must submit is because you know, you what you said it's so important. You start to mature. Mm -hmm. You mature because you know, due to the fact that we're both not perfect, but we're perfect in Christ. Being the more, perfected. yes. So the maturity is being perfected in Christ because the closer you come to get close, the, the the closer you come to Christ, right, is the more that that um, you learn. And the more that you learn is the more that you're, you're learning your mate. You're learning the differences. And then you're able to compromise instead of go against because you're in cahoots with the Holy Spirit. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And there was something that you used to say in one of our conversations that we used mm -hmm. to have about, I always have the mentality, again, another layer that had to be torn down or my, my level of thinking um, about the perfect mate. Mm. You said there is no perfect mate. Mm. If we're in Christ, you don't, right. you can't marry the wrong person per se because, right. oh boy, we're going to go on. <laughs> go on in. Because if go we're, in. That, we're in. in Christ and we're yeah. being perfected, then mm. you and him should be constantly be perfected for each other. Whoa. If we're submitting the way Whoa. we need to, right? Yeah. How do we be, how do we marry the wrong person if. Mm we're submitting to what the scriptures say, then mm. we should be being perfected in mm. Christ and being perfected mm. for one another. Therefore, mm. we would be perfect for each other. Yeah, I guess that's Is what, that, yeah. I mean, I'm saying that like it freshly came from me. No, it didn't. Mm. My husband was the one who, because I'm like, yeah, you know, marriage, the, 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 you know, people say they married uh, the wrong person or I even thought I married the wrong person or what have you, but I, that can be something up for that's definitely we probably don't get people yeah, yeah. you know but that's definitely a conversation starter yeah, yeah. um because you know we, we, we're talking about the, the those individuals that are not in christ and those people who are in christ but didn't go to christ to to to, to make sure that this is the mate for them right. you see what i'm saying and, and you finding out when you go to god and find out that this is the mate for them then, you know, they're, they're still coming with their imperfections, but the one thing that they have or the one person they have is Christ. Mm -hmm. And and hence, that's that's when the perfecting can begin to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's when the perfecting can begin to happen, but you've got to make sure that you go to God to, to, to make sure that this is the 
this is the one that you're supposed to perfect your life with. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of people that didn't go to Christ and they wind up being with individuals that are abusive, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, physically, mentally, and psychologically, and it gets real dangerous to the point that 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 you know it could it can end very, 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 very badly. So you got you got to make sure, and that's what the simplistic nature of God is. Because if you have a relationship with him, then he's going to simply tell you mm -hmm. yes or move on. He's going to tell you at the gate. In fact, so sometimes the, the individuals that you run into, you find out are just really for ministering to, but not actually marrying or getting mm -hmm. into a relationship like that. You know, and, 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 and for women, you got to make sure that when a man comes into your life or however he comes into your life, uh, you have to then really see, go to God to, to and, and, and think, is this a brother that he got so many issues that I need to uh, uh, locate another brother for him to talk to? If it's getting to that level that you see those type of issues and you have to even ask yourself, that's telling you something about that brother right there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm still thinking about this whole, you know, marrying your spouse because if we know that when you get married, you know, God, he'll go to the moon and back for your marriage. You know, that's how important that marriage is for the Lord. I mean, excuse me, that, that's how important marriage is to him. And although two people can be on different pages or have their issues, I believe that God can put those two, no matter how messed up they might may seem, but it's got to take a willingness. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by what you were telling me about. You can find your, the perfection or the perfected one in your mate through mm -hmm. the sanctity of marriage. Mm -hmm. God can do the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have. You, you, there might take a season of, of travailing or some patience, mm -hmm. but the Bible talks about that. Even with two people that are unequally yoked, the Bible yoked. speaks of a woman yeah. and her and her uh, behavior can win the spouse. So mm -hmm. there's, there, it's not an unhopeful situation when you marry someone because the hope is in marriage. God can bless your marriage and he can turn it around to the point where the person that you thought wasn't right for you is ended up being the perfect one because the two of you decided to submit yeah. one to another, meaning there's a blueprint in marriage. Yeah. And so that has to demystify the fact that there's a perfect person out there for you. Yeah. I mean, these are things, I mean, what do you all, what do you all think? Is there a perfect person for you? Do you think this? Do you think not? It's something that it, it, it definitely causes for great conversation. Yeah. Well, but, Mm -hmm. In any event, mm -hmm. it all takes some layers to sort through yeah. it all. <laughs> and those layers can only be overcome if you have Christ in your life. Yeah. So now is the time that you can get Christ in your life. Yeah. Holy are you, God. Holy is your name. With everything I've got, my heart will sing how I love you. Amen, 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 amen. All right, it is time. Repeat after me if you want Christ in your life. Yes, Lord. I recognize that I'm a sinner, Lord. Recognize that I'm a sinner, Lord. And I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I recognize that Jesus died on the cross for me. I recognize that Jesus died on the cross for me. And for my sins. And for my sins. My iniquities. My iniquities. And my infirmities. And my infirmities. And I want Christ in my life right now. And I want Christ into my life right now. To hold me. To hold me. To shape me. To shape me. And remold me. And remold me. I make a 180 degree change. I make a 180 degree change. I repent. I repent. And thank you for having Jesus come into my life now. Thank you for having Jesus come into my life. Mm -hmm. In Christ yes, with Jesus' name. In Christ yes, with Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. We got to come back again for Agape 
uh, talking about the land. We are Mr. and Mrs. Devil saying we appreciate you. We love you and only God and the Holy Spirit. Love you more. More. Ciao for now. That's right. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Did you?